This is a short movie to help you see how to use the image display system we use in the astronomy lab. The software is designed to help you look at images without having to load software on your own computer. So we run this off of our server, but we do load the images down to your computer. And when you go to one of the activities that uses what's called JS9, you'll see a set of images linked at the top and then a display window which will show the images once they're loaded. Right at the beginning you don't have any images loaded. If you click File, you see it says no images. Let's load the blue image of the tarantula nebula in this example and suddenly it appears in the window. This image is being displayed on a log scale and it works better if it's linear, so we'll put a linear scale on it. And by holding the mouse button down, I can change how that image appears. I can make it too bright, or too dark, or maybe just right, somewhere here in the middle. It's also an image for the blue filter, so I'll change its color to blue. Let's load the V, visible light or green image. The V filter is the astronomer's green light filter. Change the scale to linear. Change color. Well, before maybe before I change the color, it actually helps to see it in grayscale while we make this adjustment. And then I'll change the color to green. And then we'll load the red image. Change the scale to linear. Change the way it's displayed so that we can see some detail and change the color to red. So I've associated a color with each image, and if I look in the File menu, I'll see I've got all three images loaded, blue, green, and red, and the one that's being displayed actively is highlighted here with a little yellow, um, uh, actually it looks like a sun, marking that image. So I'd like to see all of them together to make a red, green, blue color composite image. So to do that, I'll click color and go down here and select the mode called the RGB mode that will do that for us. And now the image appears in full color. Well, it doesn't look particularly dramatic in this example, but you might notice if you do it the way I did it that the nebula looks a little bit green, that a few of the stars are blue, that some of the stars are in fact sort of red. And the purpose of this experiment among others, is to help you use this software to identify the unusual stars in the star cluster that's embedded in this nebula. So at this point you can actually go forward with the experiment, or if you want you can go back and adjust the individual colors. For example, if I want to change the blue color a little bit, I'll click the blue image, and now I'm working on the blue image, and then use the mouse to change the blue color. I can make it too blue or not blue enough, or just try to adjust the level just a little bit to get something that's a little less blue in the background, maybe a little blacker than that. And maybe it's too green, so I could play with the green, I could play with the red, until I try to adjust to get a natural looking color. But once you've done that, then there will be some odd things about the image that will highlight particular objects, and in this case it would be the stars that are quite cool and look red in this cluster.